Hey yo, what's up guys? This is Moss Man and I'm back again. I'm doing a beat breakdown for In The Room. So, as you can see, you know, there is quite a bit to this. I did a lot of automation and little changes inside of the, um, in the version with my vocals and I was mixing it down. But I've tried to, uh, you know, structure it the, the same way. I'm pretty sure it's almost the same. You know, there'll be little changes that I, I didn't know it, so I did it off the top of my head. But uh, what I basically want to do with this is just break down, you know, what plugins I used, um, the how I made these sounds, you know, and you know, the chords, etc. Like, if, if you guys want to know this thing, you know, I'll put it out there so you can you can learn, you know, and try and help people learn. <clears throat> um, but yeah, to start off, we'll go with the intro. Uh, now the intro is just this three X oscillator. Just something that I, I put quickly put together the two sine waves and uh, the little noise thingy, so you got a bit of noise to it. Like if I was going to in increase it, you know. And they're all at um, twelve on the other than the uh, the top ones, of course. And the envelope, I added a little bit of a attack onto it, um, and everything else is uh, you know just holding it together, so it. Uh, Stops as soon as I let go, but it just starts a little bit later. So yeah, um, and then on top of that, I have the DNC uh, Orion strain, which um, is you find inside the uh, the Legacy pack. So if you use FR Studio, that is, um, and it's in strings, and so you can find it here. Um, you can show it now. <clears throat> And the, the only thing I changed was that I changed the envelope to hold and sustain and etc etc and that's basically all that a tiny bit of attack. And then with this I just played a solo note over the whole thing which you know is just a little effect that people use. You know, I use quite a bit, you know, just have a little bit of pristine high end, you know, which is nice. Um then a couple of synths. Now this I just put a telephone effect on it and the EQ and a little bit of reverb. And um uh, it's actually found in my guy Jaden Richards. Um, he's from Birmingham, actually, which is very close to me. So shouts out you, um, Jaden Richards. I think Rene Varga is his artist name. Um, but he had this Tyler Creator drum kit, and uh, in that drum kit has this sound. And uh, so I used it on this. I, I've used it quite a few times actually on a few different songs. Um, so I use that, and then I also have. Just a little bit of a saw wave. Um, I mean, not just saw. It's supposed to go square. I think. Wait, is it called? I don't even know what the. I ju I just know them as the the fucking lines and the noise that they make. I don't know much at all about sound design. FYI. Um, the only thing I've got on this is the slight um, pitch modification. So, as I go, it's like a little wobble into it. Little pitch wobble. Um, and yeah, this is what it plays. And the chords are playing on the intro. They are like the main chords that uh, play throughout. Obviously, there's, there's a bridge, etc. We'll skip past that. I'm sure you didn't care too much about the intro. The intro is cool and that, but like the drop is where it's hard. So we'll, we'll play that. So we'll go with the A side of the verse. Um, in fact, the chorus. In fact, the verse and the chorus. This is the A side. So, my warning: the bass sound. Like a lot of people like the bass in the song. Yes, it's a GMS preset. Um, the Electro Brain preset. It's dope. Um, as you can see, I've turned it up fully. Turn it up fully here, but there's no effects on it. Didn't mean to press space there, but yeah, here's the bass line that's played. Now, as you can see, there's quite a quite a lot going on. I, I also uh, added a bit of a delay onto it. You know, I pushed the shift forward, 
um, just to give that kind of looser feel to it. You know, I played a lot of these notes live, but like I do add a few ghost notes, etc. I'll just play the bass on its own, play the bass line, because it doesn't. It's, it might sound weird on its own, so we'll listen to it, and you know, we'll, we'll find out. Now, if we just play that with the drums. It's funky, right? Now, realistically, to be able to play this kind of bass line, it's, the loose feel is definitely what's about. The ghost notes help. It just makes it a bit more singy. Like a lot of people just play, nowadays, you'll hear the bass just like a bump thumping a away which you know you hear the a in my songs like i i do love that shit but like you can get funky with them realistically you can't get too funky with them um but with these like you kind of they're a melody on their own they really are a melody on their own we use this kind of bass and that's why these little ghost notes and the, these higher notes etc they add so much to it they add so much character to the bass line because um, it would not sound too cool if it didn't have all this extra things. It wasn't loose. It would be doom, 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 doom. Like it just wouldn't, it's just like, yeah, it's not that cool. But a lot of you will be like, the drums, man. The the, the drums in the song. I love the drums in the song. So we'll play the um, the drum loop. The, the drums, there's a few patterns I'm playing, so we'll play it all together. Now there's also, I'll play it with the, I've got a separate set on here. So, what am I doing here? So it's not too crazy, I mean I just played these, these hi-hats, um, like the, you can't really hear them, that much, it's quite in the background, but, they're very, stubborn they're not fully stubborn as you can see like they are live so it's not perfectly on beat which adds a lot of character to it um so this kick you know it's a thumping kick and as you can see like it clips but like obviously i make it work so it doesn't sound like it's distorted it just sounds you know i don't know how to explain it but it just works um but yeah this kick i'm pretty sure it came in the dilla influenza drum kit which I'm pretty sure I got off Reddit. Yeah, it's one of that. And then I've just pitched it down a bit. Or something, maybe. Maybe it's just the fact that it's so much louder. It just <laughs> it sounds more pitched down. But I don't think it actually is pitched down. Now, the Mario snare is a snare that I um, sampled from my boy Mario. And he said he got this um, snare. It, maybe it was built into Ableton, he said. So, who knows. But I took it from his song. Uh... I forgot the name of it. It's the one that goes. It's got this snare hit. It hits four times, but the snare's slightly different because the snare is pitched down a bit now. And do I have any effects on it? I probably don't. Now, so on the kick, I just have like the highs taken out, and on the snare, I haven't changed anything. Um, yeah, the hi hats were, came from. Uh, I want to say like a battery drum kit. Um, there's this shaker which. Also, I think came from like a jazz battery drum kit or something. This other shaker, and this came from the Dilla Influenza drum kit. Um, this Philly, uh, as you can hear, like the way the kick hits with that really does like uh, it is what makes the kick how it is. Like if you play a kick with a nice big hi hat like that, you can have that shit thumping, and you know I feel like since the 70s people have been using the hi-hats to you know really you know make the kick like tight i think that's the right word and uh like if you if you listen to um just michael jackson's uh, songs from uh the, the uh, late 70s the off the wall album you'll hear the uh tight kicks and hats and like we go further forward like d'angelo i think perfected it with voodoo um the, the way the drums sound on that are amazing a lot of it's to do with how the hat and the kick go together um, but yeah anyway I'm gonna move forward from the drums that's essentially the drums now a lot of you will be like will want to know the 
uh, main chords, the voicings, etc. Uh, as you can see, there's a there's a shift here, so that means that it's just uh, played looser, more offbeat. Um, but yeah, here's the chords on their own. Now, as you can see, this is Lounge Lizard, Lounge Lizard a session, which is a uh, cheap, like almost demo version of Lounge Lizard, but it's it's I use it all the time because I didn't want to have to pirate Lounge Lizard like I did back in the day. Um, I wanted to buy it, and I saw this, and I thought it was the full version, bought it. It wasn't the full version. It came with a few other demo-ish thingies, and it's pretty dope. I use it quite a lot. But yeah, this is the bright tremolo preset. Nothing really changed. I just took the reverb off. I'm pretty sure that's it. But yeah, here, here it is. <laughs> So, I mean, I personally love this chord progression. I love the way that all the chords come together. It's very, um, and I think I think the the big reason is that like a lot of the sevenths of uh, of the chord have been changed um, with the second note. You know, I switch them around. This is the kind of thing that I just do. Like I'll play a basic chord progression uh, on a keyboard or whatever, and then I'll just change the little notes and just make it a little bit more creative. You know, the the little ghost notes or whatever the the move into the jazzy notes that move into each chord really affect like helps affect like the like the these little notes that aren't in the scale but like the jazzy notes are just sounds like you're you know just it helps mold things together i don't have to explain it you know this is i just go on my ear so if i'm shit at explaining i'm very sorry like i'm i do my best but yeah this snare that I was using for like almost background snares, like little, like little uh, drum rolls. Um, I think I sampled from Rock with You by Michael Jackson, but you know, don't quote me on that. Don't try and sue me, I will deny it. Because how are you gonna get the snare? Um, but yeah, so now we'll move forward to the B side of the beat. Now the B side is a lot of the same, but I had this thing here. Now, it sounds extremely cool, I think, with everything else on top. Um, so, what it is, is just this thing here. But then I lower the attack, so use just that. But I change it to something like that. So, I think it's got a nice. I, I really like it for some reason. I've been using it quite a bit. Um, it doesn't play the exact same chords, um, but they're essentially similar. They're all in the same key. Um, but yeah, it's just that fast chord, like a dun, dun, it's an extra rhythm it, for me. It's like an extra rhythm on top. So yeah, we got that, and then the chords from the start are played on top, um, and that just like you know, and if you listen to it. <laughs> really moves it forward and it's got this string on uh shit it's got this string on top just playing that one note you know that d note and you know it, it worked very well in my opinion and then it repeats but here's my favorite part of the beat Now, this is like the bridge. Now, uh, one thing that I've been doing so much lately is having bridges, pre-choruses, etc. These different melodies, key changes, all these things, they add so much to your song. Like, there's so much. Like, with the vocals on top of that as well. But, yeah. So, I'll break down the chords. And the chords, they're a little bit more complicated than the uh, basic chords. Uh, they're not basic chords, really. Maybe they're not more complicated. I don't know. They're longer, anyway. So we'll listen to this real quick. Oh, we'll listen to just the chords in that room. Just going down through the scale. Almost sounds like you're falling. Now, uh, I just, what I do a lot of the time to create these bridges is say, well, what note goes up? What note can go after that? 
in a, in a chord progression. I was like, this note sounds cool after that. I don't know the the uh, music theory behind it, but it sounds cool. So yeah, I've got this. Now the bass. I love this bass, and I sampled it from D'Angelo's um, Untitled. Uh, not the bass line, but just the bass, the bass sound. I used Melody.ml to get the stems, and you know, it had this. But that's a thick bass, man. So I did that. It just funky, you know. Got this string, and now the string just follows um, the top notes of the chords. You know, just this extra extra note. Let me put my phone on silent, real quick. <clears throat> yeah, um, and I use Melody Dot to get the drum loop from "Rock with You" by Michael Jackson. So that's lightly played now. On its own, it doesn't sound too great, but then with all this extra percussion, etc. It really has so much effect to it, I think. Like, if you just listen to the... Like, I just think this bridge is, like, the best bit about the song, personally. And you have the boogie down, yeah, yeah, boogie down, uh. You know, the vocals as well, you know, it adds a lot of effect. But, yeah. So, essentially here, we've got most of the song down. Like you've got the, the drums, the, the bass, the main sounds, how I use them, where to find them in FR Studio. Now, I'm not too crazy on effects. I, I use real bus. Maybe I... Where is real bus? Insert term. Maybe that's the keys? Yeah. So, what real bus does is like a um, tape emulator. So, I put it into subtle tape. I increased the hiss. I took away the um, wow and flutter. I um, increased the saturation a little bit. Increased the compression a little bit. It sounds like that, but without it, it sounds like this. It sounds cleaner, doesn't it? Like, that's the hissing sound that you hear. We don't want shit to be clean, man. We really don't. So, uh, yeah, so Real Best is like the only thing outside of FL Studio that I use. But as you can see, it's just from <laughs> reverbs and EQs. And there's nothing that crazy going on. Like, some of my songs, I'll have a million mixers on them. But this song in particular, I didn't need to. And it's one of my favorite songs that I made in a long time and all together with the vocals probably my favorite songs ever um there is one last thing i want to bring up is this riser effect um let me oh uh, no don't do that okay there we go pretty i'm almost 100 percent sure the rise um effects three is built into FR Studio. I'm almost 100% sure on that. It's probably in like. I forgot how I found it, but maybe it's in Riser? I don't know, but you know, it's it's not a crazy sound, it's just a very basic Riser sound. But, um. Yeah, like I just use that to transition between the uh, bridges. Like on this version, it fully transitions into the um, verse. But on the uh, official, on the release version, it, it just, it stops before it does the delay. You'll know what I mean if you go back and listen to it, if you compare it to this. Uh. It doesn't have the delay whoosh, whoosh, after, it only has a delay inside the bridge. But yeah, anyway, don't want to get um, too into stupid shit. This is the, uh, essentially... This is how I made this song, how I made this beat, and I, I broke down the vocal mix yesterday. Go peep that if you haven't seen it already. Um, I highly recommend it. It's probably a little bit scuffed, but you'll learn a lot. I, I record with my phone, my voice, so if you like the way it sounds and you want to know how to do it, boom. Um, but yeah, once again, this is just proof that you don't need all the fancy shit. Like, I don't even have Omnisphere or anything like that, Keyscape, none of that shit. Um, yeah, so this is it. Uh, thank you very much. Peace out. It's been Masked Man. I uh, hope you have a blessed day.